last time we gave an example of a free particle that's moving in a uh, three dimensional space okay and we used cartesian coordinates as the generalized coordinates and looked at the euler lagrange equations and from there we derived our or let's say we obtained our uh, newton's equations of motion okay um that was the simplest thing we could ask a free particle in cartesian space is the simplest thing that you can ask um to gain more experience let's take the example of again a free particle moving in uh let's say not three but two dimensions okay uh, in two dimensions um x and y plane let's say but this time we don't want to use cartesian coordinates as the generalized coordinates rather uh, polar coordinates okay so i'll use r and theta as the generalized coordinates and let's look at what we get for equations of motion from all lagrange equations that's one example and if um possible i'll take one more example um, after this one okay so let's get started okay here so i'll take the example of uh, i'm trying to use green color for examples i don't know whether i will remember this later in other videos but today okay so as i said a free particle in two dimension in two dimensions okay so what do i want to use for the generalized coordinates um i think it's already clear that it's a two dimensional problem uh, there are only two degrees of freedom and instead of x and y i can use r n theta and this will typically be the case most of the time you will be able to guess what the generalized coordinates uh are appropriate for the problem okay in this case r n theta and x and y they are all equally good actually x and y will be even nicer the cartesian ones but generally the symmetry of the problem will dictate to you what should be the generalized coordinates okay so let's take this now before i um, um look at all the lagrange equation let's have some expectation of what we are uh, going to get so imagine this is the origin of the coordinate system and this let's say let's say you are going to fire the particle in in this way in this direction okay so you know it will continue along the same straight line because there are no forces now if you take any point p on this this will have some radial distance r and some polar angle theta okay theta is measured from the x axis okay and what we want to know is how the coordinates r and theta are evolving with time okay if you had fired it radially outwards okay if it was going like this through the origin then clearly the angle will not change and you it will have only the radial velocity okay and uh, but because you have fired it not from here it's not passing through the origin it's going from um, uh, some distance away from the origin it will have an angular velocity because you see the the angle will keep changing when it's here this is the angle when it's there the angle has changed okay this is the new angle now okay so it will have both angular velocities and radial velocities and also uh, you will see it will have it's also you can uh, just if you think for a moment you'll realize that it will have angular acceleration and also radial accelerations but we'll see it explicitly so that's what we are um, expecting in general so how how do we uh, go about 
writing down the equations of motion. So first I do write down the relation between r and the generalized coordinates. And by r I mean x and y, vector r I meant. So x is r cos of theta and y is r sine of theta. Okay. Now, because I want to construct first the Lagrangian of the system, which involves T and U, kinetic energy and the potential energy, potential energy is zero. I need to construct only the, um, the, the kinetic energy, which involves velocities, x dot square plus y dot square. Okay. So let me calculate x dot and y dot. Um, x dot is r dot cos of theta minus r sin theta okay theta dot okay so I'm taking derivative of cos theta in here then your y dot would be r dot sin of theta plus r cos theta theta dot okay now I want to do um, x dot square plus y dot square. So I have to square this and this and add. So when I square them, you'll have a square of this term and a square of this term, which will add and cos square theta and sine square theta will give you one. Let me write down x dot square plus y dot square equals. So I'm adding the squares of this and that right now. So I'll get r dot square. Let's add squares of these two as well. You'll get r square, theta dot square and sine square theta and he, this one will give the same terms times cos square theta and again I use the identity sine square theta plus cos square theta is 1. It goes away. So I get r square theta dot square. Then there will be the cross terms. Okay. So you have from this one you'll get r dot r sin theta cos theta and theta dot with a minus 2 and here again you get r dot r sin theta cos theta theta dot so all the terms are identical only the differences in the sign so they will cancel when you add them up so it's clear that your this answer is correct and your kinetic energy t let me write it down here the kinetic energy t is half m r dot square plus r square theta dot square. That's good. That's that is correct. No mistakes. And your L is T in this case. So the same thing is the Lagrangian. Now I have to take the derivative with respect to both the coordinates. Okay. So my Q is the generalized coordinate R, R and theta, as I said several times already. Okay. So let's look at the equation corresponding to R. Okay. Then you have D over DT. Del L over del R dot minus del L over del R equals zero. The particle is free, which means de, um, D over DT del L over del R dot. So you get half M and two R dot. So half and two cancel. So you get M R dot M R dot. Correct. Del L over del R, the only second term has R, the first term does not have. So the partial derivative of this first term with respect to R will be zero, only this one will contribute. And you'll get minus M R theta dot square equals zero. Okay. Which implies M R double dot minus m r theta dot square is equal to zero. That's good. Uh, let's look at the q 
q equal to theta equation. Now, del L over del theta is 0 because kinetic energy does not involve theta. So, that term is gone. I am only left with d over dt del L over del theta dot. So, your d over dt and del L over del theta dot will come only from here and it will be m r square. It does not do anything to r square. Okay, It is an independent coordinate. Theta dot square will give you two theta dot which has the two has cancelled the half so you have theta dot. Okay, that is good. Perfect. No mistakes. So, now I can write this down as m I take the derivative of r square total time derivative. I am just doing the chain rule. So, you get 2 r r dot theta dot next I differentiate the theta dot term. So, I get m r square theta double dot equal to 0. Okay, let me write it first the theta double dot terms and then the theta dot term. So, I get theta double dot m r square plus 2 m r r dot theta dot equals 0. Let us check m r square theta double dot 2 m r r dot theta dot equals 0. Perfect. Everything is correct. So, your equations of motion are this one and this one. There is a theta dot here, okay. There is a dot, one dot only. This one. Okay, this, um, if you recall, this is a familiar result. So, if you take acceleration, okay, which is the time derivative of velocity, and write it in polar coordinates for the um, radial component, I mean, the, the component of acceleration along r hat, the unit vector along the radial direction will be what you have on the left hand side here and for the component um, if you look at the component corresponding to theta hat the radi uh, the, the tangential direction you will get this piece okay this term here on which is on the left hand side here so these are our familiar results and which we have derived using all our lagrange equations and I wanted to say, yeah, so just note that this is your linear uh, acceleration along the radial direction, right? This is your centripetal term. This is your linear acceleration along the theta hat tangential direction. That is your Coriolis term, okay? And because there are no forces, uh, and, uh, your right hand sides are zero. Now, we will uh, assume that there are forces also present and look at the same problem a particle a single particle in two dimensions when there are forces present okay and let us see what it will look like. So, as far as the left hand side goes in the Euler Lagrange equations what you have got here is uh, is already the, uh, correct all you have to do is look at the generalized forces on the right hand side q alphas okay. So, that is what we are going to now look at okay. So, your example, did I call it example 1? No. Example, uh, same as before, but with forces present. Let us say, but with a force, with a force affecting on that particle. And this, I am assuming that this force is also working only in the 2D, in the plane. Okay, so let us see. So, I have to look at Q alpha, where in our present case, it becomes Q r and Q theta. 
okay and what are qr and q theta so q r is f there is only one particle so there is no label on the particle dot del r over del r okay remember del r over del q so that q is r here there is no summation involved because only one particle and similarly your q theta will be f dot del r over del theta okay so you do these two simple exercises now show that if you take the derivative del r over this r okay um, I, i'll tell you the result but even before that you look at an, on the left hand side this is a dimensionless quantity you have the dimensions of length in the numerator here and dimensions of length in the denominator so whatever you get on the right hand side has to be dimensionless okay so clearly it cannot involve r then it has to be a vector quantity because the left hand side is a vector is a vector r in the numerator so whatever you get on the right hand side has to be a dimensionless vector and it's no surprising it's not surprising that your okay it's not obvious from what i'm saying uh you have your unit vector r hat here and let's look at um, an another part for you to show is del r over del theta okay this guy the left hand side should have the dimensions of r and should be a vector again because theta is dimensionless okay so the dimensions have to match and you get r theta hat okay that's correct okay and this r hat is uh, if you are not sure so r hat is what what is r hat r hat is vector r over r so that is why it is dimensionless because the dimensions cancel okay if you do those two exercises and plug it in here you get q of r f dot r hat which is just the component of force in the radial direction so i put a subscript r and your q of theta will be f dot r theta hat okay which is r this r and f of theta so i am taking the component of the force along the tangential direction and i call it f theta okay and as you can see this is nothing but the torque okay and this is the force uh, the radial component of the force so your equations of motion in this case would become you'll just substitute uh, qr and q theta in here so i'll put here qr which is fr and here i'll put q theta which is r times f theta which is the torque okay those will be your equations of motion when you have forces present and you are using um, not the cartesian coordinates but polar coordinates okay that's good i think i can take one more simple example to get some practice okay let's do that one as well so till now i have not taken any constraints in the system both both the examples um which i took in this video in the previous video they all were without any constraints but now imagine you have a single particle which is moving along a circle okay it is constrained to move along a circle so imagine some some wire which is uh, put in that form and think of a bead which is sliding along along it without any frictional forces okay and then there are also no forces now this is a problem with the constraint so the particle is though it is in let's say xy plane but it is it has only one degree of freedom okay uh, just the angle theta with respect to x axis for example so let's write down the equation of motion for this and 
because we have taken care of the constraints already we don't have to worry about it they are built in in the equations of motion they were already uh, done away with uh, the f primes were already removed okay so let's look at this example where, where is it example mm, a particle constrained to move on a circle okay so clearly there is a, a force of constraint and there are no other forces on it okay so this problem has degree of freedom 1 and for the generalized coordinate q i will use theta okay and note that theta is dimensionless which uh, is fine no problem we already obtained the kinetic energy uh, in polar coordinates for a particle uh, in the previous example and I will utilize that one. So remember that one had, where is it, let's go there, here, this, this, this place, okay. Now R is fixed so R dot will be zero. And let's say uh, the value of r is some r naught. So I will get kinetic energy to be half m r naught square theta dot square. Half m r naught square theta dot square. That's the kinetic energy. And as we said, no forces, so potential is zero, which means the same thing is the Lagrangian for us in this case. So let's write down the equations of motion. It's only one, uh, there's no, no R in, involved in this. So only theta. So del L over del theta is zero. There is no theta in, in the Lagrangian, okay? There is only theta dot. So I have del L over del theta dot D over DT equals zero theta dot, which means, okay, let's look at del L over del theta dot M R not square theta dot and d over dt which implies m r naught square theta double dot is 0 or theta double dot is 0 okay meaning there will be no angular acceleration so the particle will keep moving in the circle at the same same angular velocity that's what this uh, equation is saying which is also consistent with what you expect and these are some simple examples uh, of how to use all Lagrange equations. Um, and there are several examples which you can find in different books and I will encourage you to have a look at them and make sure that you are comfortable um, using all Lagrange equations. Okay, this is where we'll stop today and continue next time. See you then, bye.